In the largest interest rate move since 1998, the Bank of Canada increased interest rates by 1% today in a bid to crush inflation. And I'm going to go through what that means in really simple, easy to understand terms. We're going to talk about what that means for the future of the economy, for the future of interest rates, and exactly what you should be doing with respect to your variable mortgage with a static payment, with your variable rate mortgage with an adjustable payment, and with your five-year fixed mortgages. And by the way, no matter what type of mortgage you have at whatever rate you have, you are not safe from rising interest rates and you need to be taking action to make sure that you are set up and safe and secure for the future. But before we get into all the details, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And if you happen to be one of those people who is in the market for a mortgage right now, it has never been more important to make sure that you get this right. Because at some point in the future, we are going to see interest rates come back down. And that means you are gonna to need to be positioned in order to make sure that you can get the best rates available when they do come down. So if you wanna know all the information you need to know in order to make sure you are set up properly, to make sure you don't step on any landmines or have any surprises that are going to prevent you from being able to get a lower interest rate in the future, then go to rateseekers.ca and purchase our Secrets to Getting the Lowest Interest Rate course. It will explain everything you need to know about making sure that you get yourself into the right mortgage for today's times. And if you end up getting your mortgage through Mortgage 360, you'll get 10 times your money back. By the way, most people who take this course end up getting 10 to 50 times their money back just based on the information that is in the course itself. So again, ratesecrets.ca for that. And let's get into the Bank of Canada announcement from today. So first and foremost, what you need to understand is the Bank of Canada increased interest rates by 1%. Why did they do this? Really simply, they're trying to get ahead of the curve. They're trying to make sure that they don't have to do more later. So by front loading the higher interest rates too sooner, they're making sure that they don't find themselves in a situation where they have to do a lot more later. That is prudent. Yes, it's painful in the near term, but in the long term, it's going to be a good thing. By the way, US inflation numbers came out yesterday. They had even higher inflation than expected at 9.1%. So what that tells us is that this inflation story that is a global story is not over yet. So this is probably a very prudent move by the Bank of Canada. So let's jump into the headlines here. As you can see, Bank of Canada hikes interest rates to 2.5% in bid to crush inflation. As of this filming, as of right now, as I'm filming this, Tiff Macklem is providing commentary. They also released their monetary policy report for July, which comes out quarterly. And it had a lot of significant details with respect to what's going on in the economy. Now, the long and short of it is this. The Bank of Canada is expecting inflation to remain high through the middle quarters of this year. They're expecting it to come down to around 3% by the end of 2023 and return to the target rate of 2% by 2024. So what that tells us right now is the Bank of Canada has substantially changed their outlook on inflation, and they're expecting a significantly longer time horizon with respect to how long it is going to take for inflation to come back down. Now, the big thing here that they're trying to prevent is they're trying to prevent what's called wage spiraling, which is where inflation leads to higher wages and higher wages leads to higher inflation. And you end up in this scenario where inflation just continues to skyrocket and wages continue to skyrocket because there is this expectation of higher inflation. So this surprise 1% interest rate increase, well, it was a surprise for some, not for others, but this 1% interest rate increase is designed to shock the market. And by the way, the housing market, which is one of the biggest components of the CPI index, is feeling the shock of higher interest rates. And there are other sectors of the market that are also feeling this as well. If we jump in and we take a look at lumber prices and we look at it on basically a three-year basis, what you can see is that lumber prices had this really significant shock in April of 2021. Then again in February of 2022, but what you can see is lumber prices have almost come back to where they were pre-pandemic. So what that tells us is that these higher interest rates are definitely having an impact on the economy and the prices of certain goods. So some prices are going down, other prices still continue to go up, but again, that's why there's this big 1% interest rate increase. And by the way, what you need to understand about the interest rate increase today is it now puts us in what is widely considered or hypothesized to be the neutral band, which is 2.5% to 3.5%, which is the level of interest rates that is perceived to not necessarily be 
adding growth to the economy or taking it out. So they got us there really fast. Time will tell whether or not we, that is actually the neutral band and whether or not it is taking some of the growth out of the economy by getting us to that interest rate. Now, an interesting article that I do want to point out because the question a lot of people have right now is what is the prognosis for the future of interest rates? Are we going to continue to go up to 10%, maybe 15%, maybe to 20%? Well, history here can be a guide. And the thing you have to be careful about in economics with respect to history is that it can tell you a story of what might happen, but it's not a fortune telling story. It's not something that can absolutely tell you exactly what is going to happen. I mean, look at what happened in the last two years. Bank of Canada tells us interest rates are going to remain low until the end of 2023. And now here we are two and a quarter percent higher at the beginning, or let's call it the first half of 2022. Well, the past definitely can tell us a story about what was going to happen, but nobody saw the surprises that came. And yes, there's a lot of people who predicted that interest rates were going to go up based on monetary supply. And they were right. Interest rates did go up, but in a lot of ways, they were right for the wrong reason. And what I want to show you here is something that I found really interesting. Financial Post put out this article yesterday. Uh, interest rates are still rising, but investors should start preparing for when they come back down. They basically did a run back of the last six times that interest rates started to go up. And I'm going to find you the graph here because this one is really, really compelling. So what this is, is this is a graph of obviously the overnight lending rate. And what you can see is there's been several times where there's been increases in interest rates that were fairly substantial. So in this case, in February of 1995, it went up by about 4%. Then it came shooting back down. And then interest rates went up by about 2.5% and eventually came shooting back down. And interest rates went up again, came shooting back down. And if you take a look at where we are right here, we've now got interest rates that are up in this range. And basically the story that this graph tells us and the story that the Financial Post is telling us, and they're very correct here, is what tends to happen is central banks tend to overshoot. So basically what happens is they find themselves in a situation where they've risen rates, those interest rates are having an effect on the economy, but the effect on the economy is a lagging effect. And therefore they can't necessarily see exactly when those rising interest rates have had their effect. And subsequently, the economy starts to shrink while interest rates are still rising. Now, that could very much be where we are at right now. We could see an economy that is shrinking. In fact, the main numbers for GDP are telling a story that is similar to that. And as a result, central banks tend to have to bring interest rates back down at some point after they've gone through a rising cycle. And what that tells us is that we could see interest rates come down anywhere from three to six months from when they reach their highs. And that's been the trend going back to basically the early 90s, late 80s. And why is that important? Well, it's important because it makes us have to think about our mortgage strategy and it makes us have to consider where we're at and the type of product we have. So there's three types of products out there. There is variable mortgages with fixed payments, which are probably the riskiest of all the mortgages. There are variable rate mortgages with adjusting payments, which are probably the safest of all the types of mortgages out there. And there are five year fix that are probably somewhere in the middle. Now, the thing you have to remember about a five year fixed mortgage is that a five year fixed mortgage is a five year adjustable rate mortgage. If you go to the States and you ask them what's the worst type of mortgage to get, they will tell you five year adjustable rate mortgage. This is the thing. This is the type of mortgage that put the economy in the US in into a global meltdown basically when all the teaser rates reset and people went from this rate to this rate overnight and weren't prepared for it. So regardless of what type of mortgage you have, you need to be prepared. First and foremost, variable rate mortgage with fixed payments, you need to be adjusting your payments up. Don't think that just because you have the fixed payment mortgage, you've got more cash flow and you're good. No, you need to go in and manually adjust your payments because the bank that you got it from isn't going to do it for you. And when your mortgage comes up for renewal, you will have ended up in a scenario where your mortgage has not been amortizing as fast as it should have. And when you go to renew, your payment's going to adjust significantly, very quickly overnight, even more than those people who have five-year fixed mortgages. Now, if you've got a five-year fixed mortgage, you need to start putting money away. Don't necessarily go in and increase your payments because that can be problematic depending on the bank that you have, but start putting money away so that you can subsidize your payments when the time comes for your mortgage to renew, because when it renews, you're going to renew into a significantly higher payment. For most of you, that's probably three to five years from now. And the key thing here is what you need to do is you need to figure out what your payment would be at today's interest rates. And then you need to compare that to what you're actually paying. And the difference between those two is how much money you need to be putting away every single month.
in order to protect yourself when your payments do increase. If you're not out of the woods here, you must do this. This is hugely important because there is going to be a period of time where interest rates reset for you and you need to be prepared for that. You can use my mortgage calculator that's linked in the description below to figure out those numbers, but do it. Get the money so it's automatically leaving your account every single month as if that is your payment. Get it put into some investments of some sort. You can use Quest Trade to buy ETFs. Check out some of my other videos on that, but make sure you're doing something to prepare. And luckily, if you are a person who has a variable rate mortgage with an adjustable payment, you're probably in a really good position. Yes, your payments have increased. Fixed rate borrowers and variable rate borrowers with fixed payments should be acting like their payments have increased anyways. So your payments are automatically adjusting, which means you're feeling the pain as interest rates go up and you're going to have to adjust your lifestyle because your payments have changed, which means you're probably in a significantly better position than those who have this false sense of security because their payments aren't changing at the moment. So if you have that adjustable rate mortgage, again, you're probably in a really good place. By the way, I stand by my recommendations on adjustable rate mortgages. The reason why is because when we look at this, we look at it from a risk perspective. And like I've said in the past, money isn't a math problem, it's a psychology problem. We're gonna have some pretty serious psychology problems with variable rate borrowers who have fixed payments and fixed rate mortgage borrowers who have fixed payments and a payment that is going to reset at some point because they aren't prepared. You need to take the things that are in human control, like putting that money aside and basically make that so it's a non-issue. And the simplest way to do that for most people was with an adjustable rate, not to mention the reduced risk factors of having higher payout penalties and so on and so forth. And when interest rates do start to come down, and by the way, this is the biggest reason if you're getting a mortgage right now, not to get a five-year fix with a big bank because they will come down. There's going to be an opportunity to refinance into lower interest rates. The key thing is, is you need to make sure you're in a mortgage that has a penalty that is low and to your advantage if interest rates do start to go down. So make sure that you're talking to a mortgage broker and make sure that you aren't getting that five-year fixed mortgage placed with a big bank because those types of Borrowers, the people with five-year fix with the big bank are the type of borrowers that will not be able to refinance into lower rates in the future. And as far as locking in goes right now, well, those fixed and variable rates are getting closer. The lock-in rates are getting closer together. There's probably going to be some opportunities for some two and some three-year mortgages here in the near future. But for the most part, if you're in one of those adjustable payment mortgages, you're probably going to be okay. And the best strategy is probably to hold out on that variable rate for the long run. So if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video and we'll see you on the very next one. Cheers.